So I've got this recurring dream. And I suspect some of you probably have some very similar dream. But it goes like this. I'm back in college. And it's come to the end of the semester. And I realized that one of the classes I was supposed to take all year long had just slipped my mind. And it's final exam time, and I have not been to a single class, I haven't done a single assignment. Even if I take the final, which I will fail because I'm not prepared for it, even if I do take it, there is no way I could possibly pass the class now. It's usually at that point of realization that I wake up startled, my heart's racing, my back of my head's all sweaty, and ugh, I hate that dream, but it happens all the time. And I say that I think some of you have probably had it because there was a survey done. It was done by a mattress company because, you know, they are the ones that should be surveying dreams. Not making a better mattress, but surveying dreams, that's a good use for their time. <laughs> And they say 34% of Americans have had a similar dream to that. I first started thinking about this dream, one, because I was having it more often than I wanted, but a friend of mine who was retired as a school teacher said that she had a very similar dream, but it would just change throughout the course of her life depending on what she was doing now because when she was a student, she would have that dream, but then when she was a teacher, she would still have that dream, but her dream would be as the teacher. She was supposed to teach a class all year long and was coming to the end of the semester and she had forgotten to teach the class. That's why I first started thinking, why do we have this kind of dream where we show up to something unprepared? And I think part of it goes down to this anxiety that a lot of people have and an anxiety that is satiated by our preparing, that we over-prepare or we get ready for something just in case, and that lowers our human anxiety. And maybe that dream comes up more for me when I get anxious about something. I was getting our forms in for our upcoming charge conference and I started having that dream again, this idea that, oh no, I have forgotten to do something. I've done this now for 10 years. I think I know what I'm doing, but still there's that part of me in the back of my mind that says, be anxious. What if you forget something? What if you didn't plan well enough? I share that dream today because we're talking about a lesson that Jesus shares about 10 young women who attend a wedding party, and we're told five of them are prepared and five come unprepared. The bridegroom is delayed. Kind of a jerk move on his part, showing up at midnight. <laughs> bridegroom is delayed. Half of these folks that are supposed to be attending the wedding with their lamps are unprepared. They don't have enough oil. Walmart's not invented yet, so they can't go buy more. <laughs> it's the middle of the night. They can't go anywhere and get more oil. They are completely unprepared. Well, I take that back. They're not completely unprepared. They came with their lamps. They came with enough oil that if the bridegroom had shown up on time, come on, they would have been ready. But they weren't over prepared. They weren't ready for a delay. If you've taken any look at the Gospel of Matthew in depth, Something you'll notice is that Jesus does a heck of a lot of talking in Matthew. My God, the guy would go on for chapters at a time, just talk and talk and talk, and I'd get tired of it, I think. I like Mark, where Jesus doesn't say anything. He just starts doing stuff. I like that. But Matthew shows us a Jesus who talks a lot. And in fact, he talks so much that we divide Jesus' big speeches in Matthew into five discourses. 
chapter-long speeches by Jesus. And we have been looking intentionally at the final one of those discourses for the last few weeks. We call it the Olivet Discourse. And it's very focused on being prepared, but also focused on the fact that we are in this season of waiting. Waiting for a Christ who has promised to be with us. Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew was written close to the end of the first century, probably close to the time when many of the first generation of Christ followers were getting on towards the end of their lives, and they were probably asking that question, where's Jesus? Wasn't he supposed to return to us? Why hasn't he shown up again? And Matthew organizes his gospel almost as a response to that, encouraging his readers to stay ready, to be prepared. And now I got to thinking, what does Matthew want us to be prepared for? What does he want us to do to be prepared? And I had this idea that if I did the sacrilegious thing of cutting this parable out and handing it to all of you in the congregation on Sunday morning and asking you, just read this parable and tell me what Jesus wants you to do to be prepared, I would probably get as many responses as there are people in our worship service this morning. Because as we read that, we don't really get an idea of what it means to be prepared for Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Some of you might take it very literally and go out to the store right after church and buy extra oil. Most of you probably wouldn't do that. Some of you might think that being prepared means always showing up to church on Sunday morning, dressed in your Sunday best. That's the way that Jesus would want you to be prepared. Or maybe you would say being prepared is all about that personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins and going to sin no more. Maybe that is what being prepared means. To understand what Jesus is talking about throughout the Gospel of Matthew, we actually have to go all the way back to the first of the five discourses, the first of those five long speeches. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. And on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives us this radical new image of life in this world, where the lowly are lifted up, where the hurting are cared for, where the people live in righteousness, caring for one another. Jesus, throughout Matthew's gospel, encourages us to live those lives where we care for the last and the least among us, where we care for the downcast, the oppressed, the poor, those who struggle in life, So when I ask myself the question, what does it mean to come to the wedding feast prepared? I don't think it's about showing up in your Sunday best. I don't think it's about showing off how righteous you are in your prayer life or in your tithing. or when you're dictating to others how best to live their lives. I don't think any of that is what Jesus means by being prepared. I think what we are invited to see in the Gospel of Matthew is that being prepared is about being in the world, offering goodness to others. Carrying the goodness that we have received out into the world. 
So I told you the first of the five discourses in Matthew is the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus imagines this new way of living in the world. Well, the final one, the Olivet Discourse, is filled with all these visions of what the kingdom of God is like, all these warnings to stay vigilant, stay prepared. But then it ends with what might be Matthew's thesis statement. That if you want to stay prepared, if you want to stay in relationship with Jesus Christ, if you want to have an encounter with Christ in your life right now, the way you do it is by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the prisoner. That's how Matthew ends the fifth discourse, by giving us this image of meeting Christ not in a human, but in our actions. Not as somebody who's going to come sit down next to us and chat with us after church, but in us going from church and meeting those who are struggling, meeting those who need a hand up, meeting those who need to receive the goodness of God. And in doing so, that is how Jesus invites us to think about preparedness. That is how Jesus invites us to think about being ready. What an amazing invitation that is to the church today. That we do some good work by coming together for worship, but the best work we do, the way we prepare ourselves as the body of Christ, is by getting out of this church and helping others. It is by inviting people into this church to help them, to bring the goodness of God into the world. What an amazing gift that is for the church today. Let's be in prayer. Wondrous God, just as you showed us goodness in the person of Jesus Christ, just as you showed us one who would heal not only the body, but the soul, just as you showed us one who would feed not just the righteous, but the unrighteous, just as you showed us someone who would walk alongside the prisoner, just as you showed us the one who would live with those who were unsheltered, just as you showed us this, Jesus, you have encouraged us, O oh God, to become that for someone else. To carry the goodness that we read about in Scripture, the goodness that we experience in this community, into the world. Lord, help us to be bearers of the goodness of Christ. I pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.